What's up guys? Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp gingerbread house tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to continue modeling out our gingerbread house that we started last week. As a reminder this is kind of a review of some basics that you can use in order to model out things like houses but also just a fun exercise to follow along with to practice your SketchUp skills. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video we're going to use a couple extensions to start simulating icing on our model. So specifically we're going to use the extensions pipe along path and lines to tubes. So these two extensions are designed to let you create pipes or other um, circular objects along paths using whatever path that you draw. So um, I will link to both of those in the notes down below as well as to a video talking about the difference between the two. But what we want to do is we want to start off and we want to model out the icing that's going to be on our roof. Because on our roof we're going to use this to make up kind of like shingles but we're going to make it out of icing. So if you remember what we did is we've created these two roofs as components meaning they're copies of each other, meaning if we change one, the other one changes as well. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we model all of this inside of this component so that we uh, don't have to worry about remodeling it on the other side, it'll just be in there automatically. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw our curved path. So our curved path is gonna be what makes up our icing. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna draw an arc inside of our model. So let's say that this has a length of three quarters of an inch and we'll make it a half circle. What we've done is we've created a curved path here. Then we're going to use the extension lines to tubes in order to create a tube that's going to go along this face and then we're going to make copies of it all the way along the face of our house. So let's go ahead and when you install this extension it shows up under your tools. We're just going to click on this button for convert arcs, circles, lines to cylinders and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. We're going to say yes to follow me on curves, uh, yes to group, we want our material, let's not worry about that right now, and let's set our diameter to something really small, like maybe an eighth of an inch, that may even be too much. But we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And so what that does is that creates a tube along the path that we had selected. And I think I'm gonna go back and make this a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just gonna select this, tools, and we'll just say a sixteenth. So there, now it's kind of narrow, it's a little bit smaller. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a number of different copies of this piece of icing. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to kind of zoom in here and we're going to find this little point and we're going to activate the move tool by tapping the M key and we're going to click on this point. And you can see how right now after I single click this moves along with me. Well what I want to do is I want to create a copy. So I'm going to tap the control key in order to activate copy mode. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to create a copy. And then I'm going to find the center of this and click. And then now what we can do is we can create an array. Notice I haven't clicked anywhere else other than when I set that object, but you can just type in the times or star key and then the number of copies. So in this case, I'm going to start by 20, hit the enter key, and that's way too many. So I'm actually going to type in times 15 and hit the enter key. You can see how as long as I don't click anywhere else, I can adjust this as many times as I want. It looks like times 16 is going to be the right way to do this. And so what we have here now is we have a row of um, we have a row of icing in here that we're going to copy. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to select it. I'm going to make sure I don't have this line selected. I'm just going to move this over just a bit so that it's kind of centered on my roof. Not much, just a very little bit and you need to make sure that you only select these objects not an actual part of the face up here when you do this otherwise your roof's going to move around you see how I'm still moving the roof around up here I need to just do a shift click in order to deselect this edge and so I'm just going to use the move tool just to move this over so that it's centered a little bit. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect, but I might as well center it a bit since I'm already here. And so then what we wanna do is we wanna make a copy of this to create our continuing roof pattern. But the problem is what we wanna do here is we want this to alternate a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create another copy of this using the move tool in copy mode. But in this situation, I'm gonna find kind of the center point of this object right here 
and I'm just going to place this so that it's intersecting with this point. And we'll worry about this overlap in a second. But now we just want to do, and in fact, probably an easier way to do this is you could just select all of these. And we can just use the move tool in copy mode to select this point. And we can just copy all of these down just like this. So you can see how what that did is that created a copy of this row. And then we just need to come in here and we just need to create one extra copy at this point. And I'm not really worried about this being perfect. And then the only thing we need to do is we need to clean this up a little bit. Because right now, this is kind of hanging out over our roof on both sides. And so what we want to do with this is we just want to take this one object. And I'm just going to come in here and draw a rectangle across this face. So a green rectangle in order to split this. And I'm just going to right click on this. And I'm going to select the option for intersect faces with model. So what that's going to do is that's going to take this whole face right here and it's going to intersect it with this point right here. And so that did create a little jagged edge right here. We're going to go ahead and ignore that for right now. But I'm just going to take this and you can see how this split this. So now I can delete out my extra and I can delete out this plane that I used in order to split that. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So we'll just delete this out and we'll delete this out. And so what we want to do now is we want to copy this down this face. So I'm just going to drag across this. We want to make sure that we didn't accidentally pick up this edge right here. And I'm actually going to use this point as my base point. So I'm just going to tap the control key and single click here. Or I'm going to single click here and then tap the control key in order to put this in copy mode. And then I'm going to hold the shift key to kind of lock this to this axis. And then I'm just going to create my copy wherever this intersects. So I'm just looking at this to see that, okay, this is intersecting right here and we've got a smooth transition. So then we're going to type in times and then the number of copies we want to create, which in this case would be five and hit the enter key. You can see how that creates this copy right here. And I'm going to erase out these edges because we don't need them anymore. So you can see how what that's done is that's added icing on both sides of our face. So we can use the, uh, the uh, lines to tubes extension along with the move tool in copy mode in order to create that icing really quickly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to model out our door and our window and we're going to use these extensions to add icing there as well. So um, in this case, I want my door to be we'll say a little ways off this wall. So I'm just going to create a guide that shows this being maybe like an inch off this wall. And then I'm just going to draw my door. So in this case, the door we'll say is going to be three inches high, maybe one and a half wide, just like this. So all we're doing is we're just creating a path that we can then use these extensions to create a tube along. So in this situation, I'm just gonna take all of these and I'm not gonna use lines to tubes for this one because if I use lines to tubes, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me these ugly corners, right? It doesn't actually follow along this curve. So when you have an object where you have a singular path like this one, you wanna use pipe along path instead because it smoothly transitions around corners. So we're gonna activate pipe along path we're going to say the outside diameter is a 16th and we'll go ahead and we'll put our segments at 12. Um, I'm going to say no to control points and no to path into pipe group. I'm going to click OK. So what that does is that quickly creates this uh, and you can see how it has this smooth transition right here. So we're going to go through and we're going to do the same thing for our windows as well. The only thing about the windows and I'm going to hide this for a second because I want them to have the same height. So I'm gonna create a guide up here. We'll create a guide off the wall here. And then a guide right here. And this is just me roughing out where my window is gonna be. But when we create our window, what we want is we want a smooth window that goes around the perimeter and then two pieces of icing across the middle to make up the inside of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete out the face this created because we don't really need the face right now. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating the outside using pipe along path. So we'll just select the perimeter and the reason we're doing it this way is to give it one individual path to follow. Um, that's the thing about pipe along path is it only works on a single path. 
we'll go ahead and click OK. Then we'll do the same thing here, and the same thing. And then we'll do an edit, unhide, all. So that our door is now showing up in here. And we may add some little candy pieces or something like that to dress this up. But for this video, I specifically wanted to talk about how to do the icing with the extensions. And then I'm just gonna take these. I'm gonna make them a component and we'll just call these window. And then I'm just gonna make a copy and I'm gonna kind of move it around the corner. So I'm gonna rotate this like this. Notice that we're keeping the height of the window the same so that we don't have to adjust the up and down. And we'll set this so this is halfway into our wall. So we'll just pick a center point. We'll just move this so that it's intersecting with our wall. We'll move this down a bit. And then we'll use the move tool in copy mode to create one more copy here. Then we'll select them both. And we'll use the move tool in copy mode again to create a copy on the other side. So you can see how now we have all of our icing roughed out inside of this model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we're gonna model out some different kinds of candies. So we're gonna use the different tools in order to create some deformed shapes that look like candies inside of our model. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this a fun tutorial for you? Is any of it helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.